Welcome to Brilliantly British. My name is Lawrence and today I'm going to show you how to make a classic Yorkshire curd tart. So as I show you how, please sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting those feet up too and enjoy this episode. And don't forget to subscribe. The northern counties of Yorkshire are known for their rolling hills, stunning architecture, Viking history and this harmless looking terrier. And so with that in mind, we'll be turning your attention to the region's culinary creations, namely this not too distant relative of the modern cheesecake. This my friends is a Yorkshire curd tart, consisting of a spiced curd filling speckled with dried currants. Step by step, we'll walk you through our recipe before topping things off with a session of tasting at the end. So now, with the introductions made and your interest peaking, please allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British Yorkshire curd tart, you will need some plain white flour, some nutmeg, some caster sugar, some currants or sultanas or raisins, it's up to you. You will also be needing some eggs, a lemon, some butter, some milk, and to avoid the occurrence of bland food, a little pinch or two of salt. That's it for the making of today's Brilliantly British Yorkshire Curd Tart. But before you get started, before you do anything at all, please switch on your kettle, brew yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you bake. To begin preparing a Yorkshire curd tart, in a bowl turn in plain white flour, caster sugar with a pinch of salt and diced butter before combining the ingredients with your fingertips until a fine sand-like consistency has been achieved. After which incorporate an egg followed by the addition of just enough water to bring the ingredients together forming a short crust pastry dough. With the dough made on a well floured surface, roll out the dough into a sheet large enough to blanket your tart pan, making sure to keep your surface well and truly dusted to prevent sticking. Once rolled out, carefully with your fingertips, tuck the pastry in if necessary, using scraps to patch any holes before trimming away any excess, and then setting it in your fridge to rest for at least 30 minutes or better still, an hour. Following on with the pastry taken care of in a saucepan over a medium heat, begin heating up your milk, using the time whilst you wait to rehydrate and browse through the Brilliantly British Channel's content on the lookout for more interesting and delicious recipes, making sure of course to subscribe and like this episode. Thank you. As the milk warms, stir to prevent it from burning as it approaches 80 degrees Celsius, at which point switch off your source of heat and stir in freshly squeezed lemon juice. Then enjoy the transformation that will occur as the milk curdles. This process will also require you to leave the milk unattended for 10 to 15 minutes, so feel free to take a break in the meantime. Moments later, with the transformation complete, yielding this relatively appetizing whey curd mixture, pass the mixture through a muslin or kitchen towel lined sieve over a colander atop a bowl, squeezing the cloth thereafter to drain away any excess moisture from the curds. Then having thoroughly squeezed the curd, turn it out into a mixing bowl without allowing any to go to waste, yielding the essential curd for this Yorkshire curd tart. Having set the curd to one side, recall your pastry lined tart pan, which should have its bottom and sides pricked with a fork to prevent bubbling before being lined with baking paper and foil and then weighed down with baking beans, pasta or rice in my case, topped once more with a sheet of foil before blind baking in my preheated oven, using the time whilst I wait to take a much needed break. After blind baking, unload and uncover the tart base 
and return it to the oven to bake further at the same temperature as before for another 15 minute long period, which as you can see yielded a perfect tart base. With the tart case ready and awaiting the filling, to your bowl of curd add and turn in sugar, a pinch of salt, eggs, fresh lemon zest, freshly grated nutmeg and melted butter which I forgot to add until later on before whisking thoroughly until homogenous. With the filling made first sprinkle in half of your dried currants, following on by turning in all of your filling as I rectify my mistake of forgetting the melted butter before finishing it with the remaining half of my dried currants and then baking perfectly to resemble the tart on screen now. To serve, I recommend allowing the tart to cool down completely. And so with all of that said and done, with a fresh Yorkshire curd tart made and your interest peaking, I think it's time for... Tasting, tasting, tasting. Are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, one. Oh, it keeps giving. Still giving. Wow. Oh, the perfect palate cleanser. Right, you heard me say this tart just keeps giving and giving and giving. That's me trying to quantify, describe, detail to you the experience I'm having right here. The filling is creamy. The, the, the curds, the cheese curds really do come through and it's really satisfying, gratifying to know that the curds have been made in my own kitchen, the same way you can make it at home yourselves. The red currants are something that I really appreciate as opposed to raisins or sultanas. They're just different, sweet, and they just have a lovely, lovely warming flavor to them. The nutmeg, the lemon zest comes through as well to add other elements to this filling. And it's rich and creamy. And don't even get me started about the tart base, which is crisp, crisp, crunchy, just adds another dimension, another texture to all of this. It's delicious, it's fantastic. And I'm going to do my best on camera now to sell this to you, to make this more of a mainstream treat because it really ought to be. The people of Yorkshire have something really to be proud of in the form of this tart. And so with all of that being said, with all of that being said, please go out, get the few simple ingredients, make this tart because it will be, as I always say, an experience like no other. So please, please, please make this Yorkshire curd tart, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make a delicious Yorkshire curd tart. Knowing that you loved this episode, don't forget to click on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases. Tell everyone you know, and I mean everyone that you know about the Brilliantly British Food on this channel and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on and I will see you next time. Mm.